Chatham Mead, C-H-A-T-H-A-M-M-E-A-D-E. Okay. Now tell me what you're doing here. Okay, I'm an alumni of USM. I graduated with a BA in art, and I am auditing a class. I currently teach at William Carey University, but I need a studio space, and I was just so impressed with this room and this group of people that I decided to come over here and join the fun. Well, how was it working with all the other students? I really enjoyed it a whole lot. I especially enjoyed watching Eric and Kyle grow and develop. Part, pardon me. We need quiet on the set. Okay, say it again. Um, it was really a joy to use the space. It's perhaps the best studio space I've ever had in my entire life. Um, probably won't have another one quite this big ever again, um, but it certainly was a joy watching Kyle and Eric grow and develop, especially kind of upper level, um, seeing their work kind of just blossom and bloom and grow. And also some of the students who are in the lower level courses, it was neat to see them respond to the big space over here. And I don't know, come in every day and see how the work changes is always exciting. I think that's one of the best parts about teaching. Tell me what you teach. I teach painting and drawing at William Carey. Right now I'm teaching a design course. I've taught everything from art ed to art appreciation to what I'm trying to do, which is teach painting. So. Okay, well tell me Am about what you do. Am I looking in the right spot? I feel yeah, like I'm you're looking fine. Here. Okay. Tell, me about, tell, me what you're, tell me about your paintings here. Um, should I raise it up? Um, I started out at Southern as a still life painter. I painted teapots and bottles that belonged to Janet Grisanio's collection. This is back in 1998, and now in 2008, I think those still life paintings have sort of exploded and become these, they have gone from being like a little plant form in the still life to being this large explosion of color and movement, hopefully, and interesting marks, and are really about something quite different, but they certainly emerged from the other paintings. Um, Maybe the old paintings were very quiet and very still, sort of student-like, and now I'm trying to do something a little punchier with, I don't know, try, try to get maybe at my own personality a little bit. I'm sort of a wired person, <laughs> so not unlike my daddy, I guess. Um, Say who your daddy is. Is Jim Nate, of course. You can't tell. Um, what, else would, what else should I say about him? I guess I always want the paintings to be sort of beautiful or pleasing, but I want to have a little kick to them too. So that way we might question sort of this luscious environment that is the Deep South, you know? Okay, let's, let's walk around and tell me some more about, about the other paintings. Okay. I don't really know what we're saying, but this one is early on. I might start with this one. This one's sort of, sort of old, early on in the development. It starts out just as washes of color. So you can just see, you know, veils of paint, you know, from the white of the canvas, which looks something like this here, to a real thin wash where you can see the weave of the canvas, and then they get built up over a period of time. This one's maybe a little bit more resolved, and certain ideas start to emerge as I start to just play with paint as a kind of plastic media. Um, this particular painting, I think I was influenced by working at William Carey, being around a lot of Southern Belle type ladies, ladies who are probably in their 60s, who grew up, grew up in a very different South. You know, anything from learning how to arrange tablecloths and, and serving plates and things of that nature to um, teaching a serious class in the classroom I've had to pick up on the last two years at Cary. So I think this painting is in some ways about working at William Cary. And so I want to have something kind of beautiful in the painting to something that's a little uglier, a little scarier, a little bit outside the box. So that way it might be pleasing the way I think a Robert Frost poem is pleasing to almost any audience and also maybe pleasing also to the painter's eye. A little something easier in there, hopefully. I don't know if I do it or not, but that's the idea. Okay. What else you got this, here? This one's real different. This is one of the narrow I've never What's going on here? Um, I guess I always want the paintings to get wilder and wilder without becoming chaos. You know, Daddy always says I'm flirting with flux, which is certainly a, something to worry about, I guess. 
how do you create a structure and then destroy it, destroy it, destroy it, but some of the remnants remain, right? Um, so I think I, I, a friend of mine came in the studio the other day and he, he said he felt like all the paintings had this sort of rising action, like something was about to happen. And this painting, something's happening, maybe like a big pow or bang or, or a big explosion or something or, or activity is happening and things are starting to circulate and move around. Um, I'm really interested in kind of weather patterns, not in like a literal way, but how the weather changes or how the season changes or how things are constantly changing and growing, developing and rising up and falling apart all the time. Um, and this painting tries to get at some of that. Also think in some weird ways it's influenced by electronic media maybe. I don't know. Contemporary stuff. Yeah. But you can see this kind of circular thing happening in both of them. And this one up here. But this one starts to move and circulate a little bit. This one starts to circulate a little bit. It's kind of a common thing that happens over and over again. And often the paintings start to feel a little bit like maps or fragments of things that start to disperse and then come back together. Continents colliding, say. Whether or not that makes sense to anybody, I'm not really sure. But now you've studied poetry, right? Yes, certainly have. How does that influence your painting? Um, I guess the way Daddy talks about a five by eight rectangle is almost identical to the way I would think about a sonnet. You know, you have eight lines of sonnet, then there's a volta break in the structure of the poem, then you have six lines, and maybe there's an extra line instead of being five by eight. It's eight to six, right, to complete the couplet. But I don't think it's really all that different. I mean, certainly you work with words, building with words here. We're building with paint and turpentine and marks and uh, you know, a whole other host of things. Um, color, you know, is different. For example, in, in writing, you're conjuring images, trying to evoke something in the mind of your reader. This, you actually are making a physical object, I guess. So it's different, but in many ways, the structure and learning about it's the same. And I think certainly the history of poetry has helped me a whole lot with art history, which I think is probably one of my weaker areas. Um, one thing I want to say about the paintings too, though, is that I always want there to be a kind of analogous color situation. And then I want to break that analogous color situation. So if it's too much just blue and orange, I want to do something really wild to kind of knock it off kilter. I don't want it to be something you could exactly measure. I want to kind of flirt with it being a structure that's understandable, but then break it apart with some nasty yellow or green or something. I don't know. Um, but I do that because I don't want it to be boring. I want it to have a kind of nuance, a kind of specificity. Uh, Laura Beth asked me, when is a painting resolved, or how do you know what you're working on? It gets so kind of chaotic from time to time. And I said, well, I want to follow the color system to its apparent end. So how specific can it be? How can it maybe, you know, I mean, for example, you can have a butterfly shape, then you can also have just the pattern of the butterfly still feel butterfly, but not have to have the literal object. I think in these paintings, I'm trying to do that over and over again to get at something that's maybe reminiscent of the visual world around us, but not in a literal way, in a kind of metaphorical way. Place. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought you were going to say the word evocative. I want to evoke something. Sure. Sure. I'm trying to think what else. But this one's an easy one to talk about. It's sort of. You know, all these beautiful things being sort of gobbled up by this dark, nasty, looming, looming shape, and then this white piece of paint, maybe it feels like a blindfold or a patch or almost like we're repairing something that's falling apart, getting rid of something that might be obvious back there. I don't know. And this one, I, I don't know, I mean, I can talk about each one of them specifically okay. what I'm thinking about. I don't know how much you want me to do that or not. we got um, two more minutes. Okay. This one I got really excited about all the little, you know, almost like razor blades or pieces of glass or something you know, just running around. And I felt like this painting had a kind of immediacy to it. You know, there's some stuff where I'm scumbling up or drawing with an oil pastel and leaving that green underneath. But also like the way this yellow was real bold and, and I don't know, kind of ugly in some ways. So I don't want it to always be beautiful. I want it to have a kind of bite to it. And this green trying to weave it in and out, almost like it was a sewing needle or something. Like so. I don't know. But I think a painting ultimately is just you're creating your own rules. It's in some ways very self-indulgent activity because you're so excited about what it is you're thinking about and you hope that somebody else will respond to it. You hope and pray and that maybe if the work is strong enough that 
will somehow reach out to people. But you don't want exactly to do the things that have come before again. You want to somehow infuse yourself into the work. Um, so I don't want my paintings to look too much like Monet or too much like color field painting. I don't want them to look too much like Joe Mitchell or too much like, I don't know, uh, Howard Hodgkin's painting. I want them to always feel like they've got something new, something fresh, and then the kind of energy that I have to give to the work. Is that, is that good? That's perfect. Okay. I don't know what I'm saying, it's just that. 